Hey! Good morning! Welcome back to Make It Happen Monday, Teresa. We're gonna start off with questions today. Uh, everybody loved hearing Ty rant, so we're gonna just let him rant today after we get to the question. Let Ty rant, let Ty rant, so. Okay, um, any questions specifically? Yeah, Paul Allison likes to see more beach and surf fishing, maybe even bait fishing as in no lures. Also, are there any public islands that a fisherman could camp on? Would like to do an overnight. It's funny you ask that. I just did an overnighter on uh, what they call spoil islands. When they dig out the intercoastal, they dump the the sand and mud and stuff. And, and these islands have been there forever, so they've got a lot of oh, uh, pine trees and vegetation. People do camp on those spoil islands. It's mm -hmm. not real regulated. It's just uh, spits of land. You can also camp at Gulf Island National Seashores. So you got Big Lagoon State Park, which is beautiful waterfront. You've got it's, it's Fort Pickens. It's, that's a Gulf Island National yeah. Seashore. So the, the big ones are Big Lagoon and Fort Pickens. There's some places around here to do some camping, super rustic or in campgrounds, and they all have water access. Where does Nathan go over in Mississippi? Deer Island? Uh, yeah, Nathan from Mids Top Bates. Deer Island is right behind Beau Rivage. The Beau Rivage. If you look at the Beau Rivage Casino in Biloxi, Mississippi, on Google Maps, you'll see an island right behind it that runs for a mile and a half. It's huge. Roger wants to know, okay, I want to know how Ty got hooked on Sasquatch, on the Sasquatch phenomenon. For me, it was the Legend of Boggy Creek movie. <laughs> Where did the Squatch come from? Hercules, what we got? Oh my, well that good for nothing Yeti. I mean, when a man can't even have a garden or cat food, them Yetis just come by, leave your nasty little notes and eat everything you got, eat you out of house and home. <laughs> Eating my cucumbers and my garlic. They stink a little bit, but you clean them up fast. The meat's pretty good. Lights out, Yeti. Joe's gonna be on you. Man, my fascination with Bigfoot, I love animals. That's where it comes from is I just, I love animals. I've always been passionate and curious about animals. I spent my life patterning animals, redfish, patterning axis deer, patterning whitetail, patterning tarpon, bluefish, all these different species of animals we are always tracking and trying to figure out their patterns. People started redoing this Gimlin film and stuff, that old 1960 Patterson, Patterson Gimlin, Gimlin film, with, mm -hmm. and then all this new cell phone footage stuff. Thinker Thunker. Right, yeah, Thinker Thunker is a big one for me on YouTube, <laughs> where he breaks down the footage, and um, and you see patterns, just like when you're patterning, um, you know, a bass. I immediately picked up on the on the patterns of that animal. So to me, it was very real right away because anytime I had a report, I was like, well, that's you know, of course he did because. That's what they do. Love Bigfoot, love Sas Sasquatch, Yeti, whatever you want to call them. Super fascinated. Hopefully one day I'll be paddling through a wooded area. One will jump out at me. I know it, you big son of a gun. God, you stink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it for the questions. Good for the youth, youth to hear you talk about things. With that said, that kind of stirred him up for schooling. You know, right. neither one of us ever did really well in school. He had a horrible experience with school, so we're gonna let him rant about school. I'm just gonna go on about my my experience with school as a child, and hopefully it may help some children and some parents. I struggled with school from day one, except for kindergarten. I rocked the heck out of kindergarten. You rocked coloring and, and eating glue? Yes, because I'm a super right brain creative person. And they That's, love to let you cut things and, out. Uh, my mom. So kindergarten, I rocked it. They were like, this guy's going to crank first grade. I was in first grade in Mississippi. And uh, first week, they were like, what is wrong with this child? He's not retaining anything. He's all over the map. They shipped me off to a different school, Teresa. They yeah. shipped me out of first grade of the school I was in because I was so bad. They took a few of the bad ones and just shipped them off to some other school. Uh, so I started off on a bad foot. So all I remember from first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade was constantly being segregated and put in annex buildings. It was really strange because all my friends were like Teresa and all these people I hang with, they were all like super, super scholastically inclined, straight A's, and they were my friends, but yet they made fun of me. They called me flag boy because I had a solid DF average. I was constantly put in annex buildings. I remember vividly in second grade being put in an annex building. They'd come and get me, put me in an annex building with mentally handicapped people. And I learned in there, you know? Didn't they tie a book around your so neck? So that's who I was hanging out with at that point. And I come back out there like, why am I in here, you know? Well, you can't get it, son. And you know that. When did they put the book on you? 
Man, that was like fifth grade. They got frustrated because I couldn't finish the assignments. I couldn't do them. They tied me to a desk with rope. They tied a book around my neck, my uh, my assignment book, so I wouldn't lose it. I wouldn't lose it intentionally. It was a nightmare, and I had a DF average just all the way through. High school, I really wanted to play soccer. I managed to work so hard, and they put me in the most remedial classes so I can make soccer happen. But I did manage to graduate. I said, I'm not going to not. It was already embarrassing. And I failed the ninth grade. I failed ninth grade, and they were like, I think we need to hold him back because he's a little younger than all the other kids. It might help him. It didn't help nothing. I tell you what, it did embarrass the hell out of me. Kid turned to me on the first day on the bleachers and said, weren't you here last year? Aren't you supposed to be going to the high school? <laughs> Oh, they didn't have ninth grade in oh, high school? Oh, Lord. No. My saving grace was I could play the hell out of a guitar and I could sing. So I always had a band. You know, I always had a, like a clique of people that looked up to me because I could play and sing. And I was actually doing gigs. My, I did my first show at 11 years old. That was my saving grace that, you know, this kid cannot add, subtract. He can't pay attention. But he can, you know, he can sing. But they still said I was going to be nothing. They still told me I was going to work at McDonald's for the rest of my life. All the guidance counselors. If you don't get this, you will work at McDonald's forever. Traumatic. Somehow I got into Sam Houston State University first semester, failed out immediately. Blew my mind. I don't know how people do university. I excelled. I was in the art school department, did really well with the drawing and the painting and all that stuff. And then geography and all. <laughs> so I, I know there's a big gang of kids out there that are visual learners that are struggling in school. A lot of males struggle in school because they're not females. And females really shine in that environment. The, the female creatures are much more calm thing and it really fits in the school and then you take a big strong male child and just and try and sit him in a desk raging with mm -hmm. all this power and they just want to do something so a lot of male children do have trouble there's a great book on that called wild at heart everybody has a male child that's struggling please read it. it is about it's so thin and it's about the natural essence of a male and what why they're here why they struggle in school mm -hmm. and while the wild is being beaten out of them so it's called yeah. wild at heart it's written by a preacher it's an amazing little book it sheds a lot of light having a daughter and a son yes there's a huge difference in them i'm not sure why we're trying to make everybody the same admirable thing to watch a male child develop and a female child develop a male child wants to run and jump and play and tear things up Good God, my son tore things up, took apart radios, took apart... He blew up my toilet. But girls don't do that. They they tend to clean. Much calm. Damien did horrible in school, too. Incompletes, 32s, things like that. I didn't come down on him probably as bad as your parents came down on you. Let him do his thing, and a lot of people said he was going to dig ditches. But now he's making more money than all them, digging holes, laying PVC on big ranches. So and let, just watch them blossom and give them love and nurturing. And, uh, ooh, that's a touchy subject. Please do. I mean, they try to drug him into submission. To they wanted me to put him on Ritalin when he was 13, and I fought it. There are the f a few. There's a few. That and are calm and, and very scholastic. And, right, and they're praised for And it. you should, you know, in, embrace that if you're... But it's not weird for a male child to be spastic and to be labeled as ADHD. It's, no, he's just male. My he's just son male. almost got expelled from school for drawing guns on his book cover. Guns, okay? And he owns... Uh, I understand the he gun He owns thing. 30 guns today. He owns a lot. But it was because he loved to hunt. Passion, yeah. He was yeah, passionate, passionate about hunting and being in the woods. He also owned 50 knives. But, uh, I try to explain that to a vice principal or a principal. They think that your child's going to be the next school shooter. Um, right. When you know your child, you know that that's not true. I had run-ins with lots of principals, vice principals, and teachers that didn't like him because of his fascination with hunting and fishing. And he failed everything. <laughs> he failed horribly. <laughs> so flash forward, I started my art, you know, doing my Cajun art, my Louisiana art. And um, I sold over 15,000 pieces in in five years. A lot of shows. I was doing the Red River Revel in Shreveport, Louisiana. It was an eight-day show. And a teacher walked in with a classroom. She said, oh, this is beautiful artwork. Y'all say hi to the artist. And please, sir, will you tell them, this little fifth grade class, why they need to study hard and be good in school. The ma'am, you walked into the wrong art booth. <laughs> I didn't want to come down on the lady, but I did say, you know, who makes horrible grades? Means nothing, you're gonna go far. <laughs> Don't worry about it, School, school's not the be all end all. It's a great opportunity, we're blessed to have it, but it's not it but the be all end all by any means. No, I think it teaches you great social skills. Do your best though. High yeah. school, just have fun and graduate. 
I never had to say anything to my daughter now. That was a straight A student that came home with 104s and 105s. Graduated and like, early. How do graduated you? Graduated a year yeah, early. Graduated when she was 16. Two different animals. They man. are. That's a beautiful thing to have different little creatures running around doing different things because we all fit into some area of life that he fits somewhere that, that you don't fit. I fit somewhere that he doesn't fit. And we complement each other. It's a beautiful thing. It yeah, really so you, is. you got to take that male child that's struggling. Don't beat him up for Struggling it. in school and just kind of figure out where he's headed and just help him out. I, yeah. yeah, I allowed my son to do his thing in school. And then for summer, he got to go hang out with his papa all summer long. Fishing and hunting because that's what he loved. Just don't forget male children have a lot of power. 12-year-old boy... 12-year-old boy a hundred years ago would hike over a mountain, kill a deer, and drag it back by himself. Yeah. They can do that. You know, they would get up at five in the morning, milk all the cows, mm-hmm. and drive po- and, and drive fence posts, and before school at 5 a.m. Girls weren't doing that. The boys have, have strength, so you got to take that into account when you're just a little bit of a ranting. Now, if we could just focus on the fact that you don't need a college degree to go far in life. I was a high school dropout. I was a statistic. I got pregnant when I was 16 years old. They all told me I'd be nothing because I ruined my life. I actually fudged to get into my first job. I had a successful career for 15 years. Moved up the ladder quick because I was determined, smart, in my area, did what I needed to do to succeed, so. Gary V say about passion? Passion will outdo talent. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll put it up right here. A grinder's gonna do way more than Gavin a, does horrible at his at his job in this restaurant. He, he makes a lot of mistakes. He does, he does. But horrible. he's a grinder. He's there early. And you got somebody that's talented in the kitchen with a lot of experience. Don't show up and stuff like that. He's mm-hmm. still winning out because he's in there just He'll work grinding. every single shift. He may drop something every shift, but he's in there early. Grind beats talent, man. It really does. And and grind will eventually become talented. I don't want this whole thing to come across as you know, we're down and down. No, you school. should always be trying to educate yourself. Even you're sucking in school, you should be trying to learn. And when you get out, you should be self-educating for the rest of your life. Whether it's higher education, if you want to be a vet, that's fine. Go do the stuff you need to do to be a vet. You do what you love. Pick what you love and just do that. Think of what you love to do for the rest of your life and just do that. I don't care what it is. Don't chase money. If you chase money, you may end up catching it, and you will not be happy. We just you chase your about passion. That. Yeah. You chase your passion. <laughs> you're going to contribute to the world 10 times more doing your focus and your passion than if you're just trying to get through life, just trying to make some money doing something random that you don't really care about. Everybody owes the world their passion, their desire, and their full heart. Are you done? <laughs> they said to rant, so I ranted. That said... I just want people to know I struggled in school. I was an F student. I want people to know that. So it has nothing to do with money. School and money are two completely different things. Read Rich Dad, Poor Dad if you don't believe me. What the rich teach their children that the poor and middle class do not. Formal education has nothing to do with it. I don't, I don't, we're not knocking school. I just think for the two of us, school was not important. I mean, I dropped out of ninth grade twice. I only made it to the 11th grade, and then I had to drop out permanently because I needed to work two jobs to take care of the kids. So school is not the end-all, be-all. But if, if you enjoy school or your kid enjoys school, support them. Just right. support them. Try not to beat them down. In hindsight, I got in a lot of trouble. Coming from two class clean kind parents. Oh, I bet you did. I got in trouble from the school. I got in trouble from my parents. Whoopings, grounded. <laughs> I never got to go to recess, ever. I was always inside making up work for recess. recess. That's which horrible. is the worst thing you can do to a male child That's is pin them up. Make it happen Monday. I wanted y'all to know I sucked at school. I just wanted y'all to know that it was a, it was hard for me. The struggle was real. Yeah, but, but uh, we've I've led a very fruitful life and uh, married a beautiful woman. That's we love my life i love 30 miles out i'm passionate about what we do every day i love taking people fishing i love playing my music woodrow's coming out tonight boy woodrow's playing tonight woodrow's got a show tonight in daphne alabama like that don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe we'll see y'all next time right here on make it happen monday come join us over at patreon where we're having a blast we actually have our first patron camp out patron only camp out patron only so head over to patreon if you want to get the deets on that and it's coming soon adios amigos